one calls the ancestors. Anyway, and the fractality in air is basically charge distribution efficiency in the same way in water you know if, 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 if there's life or death by measuring redox, which is charge distribution efficiency, which is fractality in water. So air can be fractal too, which is really sacred space to find. At any rate, so to understand how that works a little bit, just a little clue about fusion theory and color, which will be in, an introduction to part two of this evening, which is the colorful history and psychology of alchemy. That's part two of this evening's conversation. But in introduction to that, the last, at the end of part one is the physics of color. Okay? So I have said to you that this one wave shape, pine cones kissing, is the reason color, life, gravity, perception, and bliss exist. I'm now going to explain to you the physics of why this is the only reason that color exists if I may, and I'm going to do that in about three minutes flat, something that Goethe missed. So it basically, if you take the physics, first of all, you need to know that color is perceived in the cone of your eye, never in the rod. In physics, we know that you can only use a cone to measure one thing. Cones are used Cones are used to measure the phase angle or tilt of the incoming field, electric field, radio wave. So if you build a cone in physics, the only purpose of using a cone as, as an antenna is you want to know the tilt or angle of the approaching donut electric field. So that in itself is proof that obviously color is a name for the angle of the incoming photon. The other thing we know about photons is contrary to what your physics teacher may have taught you, the photon is not a flat wave on flatland. The photon is a three-dimensional wave shape. And we obviously know in physics that all three-dimensional wave shapes are only donuts. It's the only shape that physics ever has seen any wave form. It's the only self-organizing shape for waves. So a photon's a donut. It's clear. So the donut called the photon is arriving at the cone of the eye, and the cone of the eye needs to measure the angle of the incoming donut. There's the donut. Here is, the other thing we notice is that the visible spectrum is almost precisely, or is precisely, one octave, 350 to 700 nanometers. And the others, there's other fascinating thing. Well, first of all, so you would know that practically speaking, that the visible spectrum from red to green to ultraviolet and infrared is 180 degree tilt of that donut. It's a bit self-evident since you have an octave here. But the other thing that's fascinating, fascinating and beautiful, it beautiful, is, is that if, if you take the the exact frequencies of the primary colors precisely and convert that to that angular measure, 0 to 180 degrees tilt, it turns out that the colors of the, uh, that we call the primary colors are precisely 0, 45, 90, 135, 180. Cube, simple, easy. Okay, that was fine. We got, oh, oh, we got two other angles in there. The yellow and the blue, which are really rather beautiful colors, I think. The, the angle, which is precisely linear, predicted by those wavelengths, is 63 and 117 degrees. Where did that come from? Do you recognize 63 and 117 degrees? Well, I did. When I first saw this chart, I recognized those angles. You know what they are? <coughs> this is... Uh, 117 degrees from here to here in my hand, and this is 63 degrees right there. So the face angle of a dodecahedron is 63 and 117 degrees. What did we just learn? Wasn't that cool? What are those donuts doing when they're making rainbows? Oh my God, is that exciting or what? The donuts are angling themselves to get into the line of the faces of a dodecahedron, and when they do, they sort themselves at the center called phase conjugation, and the result of the emerging donuts at only the angles that fit 
is called the rainbow. Any questions? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> well, the only self-organizing form that waves take, for example, smoke rings, is donuts. So if you have waves, the only form they make is donuts. If a photon is a wave, it's a donut. Any questions? So you're, you're asserting it's not coming from any known source? Uh, I don't think Einstein had any references when he published Relativity. Okay, that's my question. You know, okay, thank you. Next question. It's applicable to the other uh, aspects or the other uh, frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum, like sound. Yes, yes. Oh, it's so beautiful. I didn't even finish the thought. So after I did my equation for the radii of hydrogen, I took the Planck time constant and the golden ratio function and did an equation, and I predicted the frequencies of hydrogen. And that same frequency cascade, which is, by the way, the secret commercial physics that we're playing with here in <laughs> Melbourne, but the same equation for the frequencies... If you just keep going, it predicted the key frequencies in the audio for hydrogen. It predicted the key frequency in the megahertz for microtubules. And then, you kept going, it predicted exactly the duration of the Earth year. And it predicted exactly the duration of the Venus year. It is proof, Planck time, golden ratio, etc., that whole... It is proof that fractality in time as well as space is the only way to emerge from chaos. It is the only physics of coincidence. You want miracles in your life? Get fractal or get dead. Literally, it's about compression in time. So that article is goldenmean.info slash coincidences. Millions of coincidence, singular, and millions of people have read the article, and it, it goes on in detail and talks about the origin of the Mayan calendar and shows the golden ratio cascade there as well, in time. The point is that Time, like mass, is only a name for rotating charge. I repeat, time, like mass, is only a name for rotating charge. The inertia of the rotating charge is called mass, and the period of the rotating charge is called time. It's the same stuff. So when people say the time-space continuum, they're confusing you. It's only charge that's rotating. Time is not separate from space. And the term dimension only refers to the superposed axes of symmetry possible. And you can never superpose more than three without golden ratio, which is why that's the key to the fourth dimension, the hypercube. And that's where we're going to start part two about alchemy. But first, any more questions? Yes, sir. You said before about surviving through the pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, what were the last words you spoke? How do we compress? Yes. Um, well, <laughs> thank you for asking the beautiful leading question. Okay, now I get to show my slides about death. <laughs> well, here's what we know. Uh, uh, very good point. There's a tradition called, I believe, red lion or green lion among the Tibetans. And, and in fact, as they uh, retreat and choose to die, their body compresses. And you see just fingernails and teeth left sometimes. And at the moment of death, you see rainbows. And, the, and there's, it's even in the films. And the reason you see the rainbow is they've added a phase conjugate dielectric field to their environment at the moment of death actually. But I, I, thank you, Valerie. But I was going to show a, maybe a simpler example, which is Karatkov's study of death. And this is an answer to your question, how do we compress? Because death is a pretty good example, in my view. Um, we know that it, if you measure where your aura or plasma goes at death using the medical documented technique of the GDV, that your aura tends to leave your body at 10 hours and 36 hours after death which is in some ways confirming the Tibetan literature. This is by measurement. There, a large number of people who were not volunteers because they were dead uh, uh, were measured. And, um, and in fact, the, the time it took for their plasma to leave after they died uh, was consistent. By the way, it only works really well if you have a peaceful death. Very important, actually, if I may suggest. And where you need to die is a fractal 
The altar at Machu Picchu will work. A hospital will not. Sorry. Because the electrosmog prevents the distribution of your plasma. A bad place to join your ancestors, actually. So, you see the compression event here. This is thanks to Alex Gray. Um, the compression is your plasma trying to find the center of a fractal. Compression. How do we compress? So, an example of understanding the mechanics is called the map for when you die. The Heinrich Cluvet form constants, he interviewed a large number of people who died and then came back. But I believe some of his subjects also had done too much LSD. I'm not sure of the details. But at any rate, it was a large population of people who had near-death experiences. And indeed, they reported the shape of what they saw. Indeed, they saw lattice, cobweb, tunnel, spiral, and then it would repeat. So the geometry of death is documented. It's clear. When you're driving to Paris, get a map. If you're dying, get a map. Very simple. So the reason that's what you see when you die is because that's the folding sequence of your DNA preparing you for compression. If you can withstand compression, you can be accelerated. And the plasma, the charge of your aura, is then distributable. And that then becomes the large-scale electric field in the plasma. Your ancestors' voices. That's why the Hopi were clear they didn't want metal sewage pipes in their burial ground because the ancestors would stop singing. It's actually good physics. Yeah. So compression is the key to acceleration and distribution and that's how life is formed. So this is your DNA saying lattice, cobweb, tunnel, spiral, and this, the braiding algorithm. We don't have time tonight for the braiding algorithm of DNA, but basically what happens in DNA, oh, this is called the hat of Osiris which is the shape of the pericardium preparing you for compression. And there's a whole story about that, but too many lectures to fit in a, a short time. But the braiding algorithm of DNA is very relevant, just that what you see is that DNA recursively braids thread to string to rope to fat rope. There's the thread, the double helix. And that braiding algorithm where the short wave becomes embedded in a longer and longer wave. It's called the braiding algorithm. Here's the animation of that. Here's the thread. Here's the string. Here's the rope. Here's the fat rope. This is called embedding or nesting, where a short wave gets in phase with a longer wave. Well, when that happens recursively seven times, the plot thickens. I mean, <laughs> DNA gets thicker. I, and, and what happens is you get a soul. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the, the DNA palastrates and turns inside out and becomes toroidal on a large scale. And there's a phase relationship with a very long wave. And eventually your DNA becomes a little electric tornado that makes... Um, little black holes as Peter Garieff was measured. So it's actually this recursive braiding in DNA which is this phase discipline to a very long wave which enables you to become psychokinetic. The sort of playful way to understand this story is if your ancestors walked barefoot on the same land for a hundred generations there is so much phase discipline between their DNA braid sequence and the magnetism of that land that their emotions fabricate the weather. Very long waves. It's another name for weather charge, you see? So when Auntie Lorraine died there in Byron and the storm went right across the continent on the magnetic line, you know? And that's another story. Any other questions? Do you want to um, call the break at this point? Yes, good idea. So after the break, the idea is to a romantic story about love and alchemy and John Dee and... Yes. Okay, so juicy. Thank you very much.